Welcome to the very first episode of Winning Conversations. We are so thrilled that you joined us, Heritage family. We kick off this podcast with a really great conversation. This is such a treat. Dan, Hannah, and Andy sit down with Danny Hill, our worship pastor here at Heritage. Danny has been at Heritage for six years, and over the last year, he stepped into the worship pastor role. He shares about his family, their incredible transition to living and serving God here in Texas. This one is definitely worth a listen. So let's jump into the conversation right now. Hi, listeners. We are so excited to have Danny Hill in the building here with us today. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> Danny, we're so excited to get in some conversation with you, ask you some questions, and get to know you a little better. How do you feel about that? I'm great. You're with excited. That. You're yeah, ready. No All problem. right. Well, tell us a little bit about your story. How did you come to serve here on staff? Well, it started back in 2016. I got here with my family in 2016, and it was through praying um, and fasting, asking God where did he want uh, our family to worship. So um, after about three months, I got a vision of Heritage of Faith. In a dream, I saw the H, and I saw purple lights. And um, I woke Trina up, and I told her, hey, you know, this is where God is sending us. Prior to that, I had no clue about Heritage of Faith, and I've never been to Texas. Wow. So, um, yeah, so <laughs> so we looked it up, and it said Crowley, Texas, and, you know, I, I, I was like, I don't even know where that is. Yeah. But, you know, for starters, you know, you hear about Texas. One of the first uh, cities you hear about is Dallas, you know, the yes. Cowboys and all that mm-hmm. stuff. So um, I told her, I said, hey, you know, this is where God wants us to go, and um, we looked it up. And I saw Heritage of Faith, and we got here in 2016, and it was just magical from then. That's amazing. and Up to this point. That's very similar to Terry and I's story, the Lord telling us to up and leave everything. And yes. so I, another cool question I think would be good for the listeners to hear yeah. is, what was that like when the Lord told you to leave everything that you knew behind and go to a whole new state on a spiritual level, as a family, I mean, you're uprooting everything you know. You're taking mm-hmm. your whole family to a whole new place. So what was that like for you and Trina? It was an, an excitement that came over us because we knew that we heard from God. Yeah. You know, and how we knew it wasn't any second guessing yeah. or whatever like that. And then when we broke the news to the kids, they were excited. excited. And, you know, it was more like a, an adventure for them. They didn't know what was really going on from a spiritual standpoint, but... Uh, when we got here, I mean, it was just like celebration. Yeah. So for us leaving, we knew that we was coming into something great because God told us to do it. Amen. And so, the Lord took care of you the whole way through whole it. Way. Whole He's way so through. faithful. And whole he always shows through. up when you do what he, what, yeah. you t- what he tells you to do. Absolutely. He's and faithful. we we left everything behind. We just got yeah. in the car and came and yeah. we brought yeah we brought <laughs> some clothes. We put all our furniture in storage. Every we left. Yeah. I left. Uh, instruments and all kinds of stuff left it back in storage in Georgia and um, yeah we yeah. released it and gave it away and God honors <laughs> that obedience Absolutely. I didn't know you saw the heritage of faith which is the most yeah. specific name in the history of church <laughs> <laughs> like, like I didn't know like oh what's up mountain church yeah. nothing it yeah. is the very specific name yeah. yeah like heritage of faith you can't even find it on Google alright so like yeah. Hey, 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 we're working, we're working on, on it, okay? We're working but, on it. But I'm about to show y'all something. So when we moved here, we got planning and everything. I put in Heritage of Faith and started seeing all kinds of Heritage of Faith. Yeah. All oh. different types of Heritage of Faith. Heritage of Faith in Colorado. Heritage of Faith in this. And I was like, what? And it was just mind-blowing because when we Googled Heritage of Faith, one came up. Crowley, Texas. Well, well that's I'm the praying Lord. that that happens every time. <laughs> yeah. That's the Lord. Yeah, that that's is the, the Lord. That's the Lord, 100%. So, yeah, because yeah. that was in Google yeah. Analytics. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's crazy, man. And, you know, people, you know, of course, you know, family is like, nah, y'all crazy. Yeah, yeah, you, amen. You, we you, have, you yes. bugging out. You lost your mind. 100%. And then, Leave it and then so, you talking about all my music, my choirs, yep. you know, uh, everything that I had going for me at the time. I was, before I left, I was already a worship pastor at another church when I was in Atlanta. So, when he told me to leave, and my sister, check this out. We went out to eat with my sister, right? My sister got, uh, she got two churches. They got two large churches in, uh, one in Ladonia. (laughs) (laughs) One in Ladonia, Georgia, one in Covington, Georgia. When we were getting ready to leave, we sitting out eating dinner, Uh and this is the week before I'm leaving to move to Texas. She says, oh, little brother, man, I, I wanted you to become a youth pastor of both campuses. 
wow. in Atlanta. What? Did you want to be a youth pastor? No. Is that, no. no. <laughs> well, the, what's crazy is I was a youth pastor in Canada when I was there. Okay. When I started the choir, yeah. I was a youth pastor there. But she, um, when she told us, remember, everything is going to be presented to me. That You're talking about house, car, everything. We, we, here you go. Here's the lineup. And I still had to deny that. Yeah. To come here. Because you did what God told you. Because wow. I did what God told me. And God you. honors that faithfulness wow. yeah. every time. Yeah. Like, isn't it weird, though, when you're doing what God's telling you to do, how crazy it sounds mm-hmm. in the natural? Mm-hmm. Like, you're like, hey, I need to go to a place I've never been on tank gas I don't have yep. and do all these things. Yeah. Also say no to all these easy way out. Easy. Yeah. Like, was, but was there a hesitation? Like, did you has Like, was there any sort of hesitation to move up? All the way here, mm-hmm. not not There's any no other. Hesi- any anything else I've ever done, hesitation. Yeah. This one move, no hesitation. Yeah. This one move from yeah. j- everything else in my life, I was always like second guessing, like oh, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Even moving to Atlanta, I you know I told Trina because my sister, my other sister who was a pastor as well, she <laughs> she, <laughs> she was what's she in the water, bro? <laughs> what are you, that's crazy. Yeah. So she she was uh. She was having a church, so they. She told me, uh, "Danny, we just want you to come help with the music department and uh, be a youth pastor there as well." And so I didn't even kind of discuss it. Which I was like, "Hey, you know, the family need help. You know, let's go to uh, Atlanta and help the family out." And mm-hmm. so she was like, eh, "Did you hear from God?" I don't know, but we just going to help the family. So I was only in Atlanta for two years. Wow. Because that was not a God move. That was me saying, okay, let's go help somebody. Yeah. Sure. Because I, because sometimes, you know, you could get caught up in that. You're thinking you're doing something good. You're doing a good but thing. You're doing a good thing, and you think, man, I'm doing something good for my mm-hmm. family and everything. Is that what God but told you to do? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, so often we're like, oh, God, meet me where I'm at. Yes. Like, <laughs> bless, bless my plans, yeah, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you better hurry up and catch up because yeah. I'm So it's in. like, yeah, you're making a decision. It's like, oh, God, God, God will be with us. Yeah. But he didn't even tell me to do, he didn't tell me to go to Atlanta. I was just happy because I was moving closer to my mother. Mm-hmm. I was moving closer to my sisters. Sure. So I was like, oh, it's, it's a done deal. But I did not even get no, you it's, know. Well, it's just amazing that, like, like again, say it out loud. I get the opportunity to go be a part of a church, mm-hmm. to be a blessing to that church, to mm-hmm. do God's ministry in that church. Mm-hmm. And why would that not be what God wants me to do? <laughs> That's true. And you're like... But it is. But it is. But God. Yeah. But God told me to do this, yeah. and that is different. That means I just absolutely put my faith and trust. Dude, in You him. talking about so so our lives can be you know like the radio could be on a certain frequency mm-hmm. and stuff, and if you don't have it, it's in between stations. You hear that? Yeah. Yeah. It? yeah. So it was pretty much that because back in 2013, maybe mm-hmm. maybe 2012, 2013, we in the house. And I just came out and said this. And this was, I said, I'm on to something, but my frequency was just off. I told Trina, I said, man, wouldn't it be something to move to Dallas, Texas, and go to T.D. Jakes Church? <laughs> I said that. I said that. Wouldn't it be something? I said that. Yes, I said, wouldn't it be something? And we left it there. It didn't come back to our remembrance till I was in Texas, here already. And... That's how we freaked out. We said, man, we spoke things, but the frequency was off. So, yeah. And then a lot of people, even with this, a lot of people, of course, they don't see, but I was playing drums here for six years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, we're... It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. One thing he's got here is like yeah. it's crazy. What you I was heard, I served for six yeah. years on well, you drums. You were sacrificing to come here and just be a part of this. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> But it's been life changing, man. It's I still can't believe you Googled Heritage of Faith and got Crowley. Crowley, Texas. Can you come <laughs> our little cow town that used to have like what one stoplight? Yeah, yeah. See, <laughs> I mean, do I? No, no Lord, you're on your keyboard like I don't. Yeah. Even know. <laughs> I will say for somebody who has lived in Fort Worth and went to like Crowley High School, you saying that you moved to Crow? I'm think in my head, I'm like. Oh, what you you weren't missing out on much, but it makes me feel good that like this. I mean, well, being jo- bo- yeah. listen, being born and raised in New York City, the city that never yeah. sleeps. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's always something going on. And even in Atlanta, they're catching up with New York. They're doing mm-hmm. the same way, and it's just a bunch of people and stuff. So when I saw Crowley, I just but there was an excite. Here, here's the deal: that what excited me was the fact that I heard. Specifically from God, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. He told me everything in specifics. Yeah. Like yeah. you know, it's not like if I Google and no heritage of faith came up at all, then I'm like, oh wait a minute, yeah. no, 
it something popped up and we freaking out two o'clock in the morning. That's amazing. I told her, I said, get up, get up, get up, get up. I got it, I got it, I got it. I got it. She was like, you what? You got what? You I said, this is where God told us to be. Yes. And because he's got a divine assignment on your life, but mm -hmm. also for Heritage of Faith, and what an exciting time to be a part of all of that inside of Crowley, Texas, because there's a movement happening here and within this church oh, yeah. that's going to shake Crowley shake and Crowley. all of the surrounding yeah. areas for yeah. the people that need this word on time. Mm -hmm. Just like you needed your word on time, there's other people in Crowley and the surrounding area who are looking and searching and, and longing for a word, and it's here. It's so at Heritage true. of Faith. Mm -hmm. So you true. You know? And so, so how they, awesome. Yeah. They, we, uh, so even in ministry, a lot of times ministry, they care about the one that's gifted, but they leave the family behind. So, you know, doing what I'm doing, oh, as long as Danny's there, we good. Mm -hmm. You know, forget his wife, forget the babies, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. we need him. You know, it was, it was always that type of, you know, as long as, so when we got this, the Lord specifically told me, this is for the entire family. Yeah. That's amazing. Everybody's gonna thrive. Yeah. Everybody's gonna, you know, move higher and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that was amazing. So for the kids to be, we going to church tonight, oh. you know, and, <laughs> I love that. Yeah, and they getting in the car and they showing me all the things that they want and all the things that they've been doing. And then even for me walking through the youth, the, the children's building, and I'm just seeing those pictures. Sometimes I just come in during the week, I'm just looking, I'm like, Dad, look at my son. Zephaniah was born in Texas. Yeah. yeah. Right? So that lets me know full circle for me. Like, okay, yes. you was obedient. Look, look, look at this last one. Look yeah. at him. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, so yeah. I, I'm just, what I what I amazing. what I love the I think probably the most is God told you to do something, and He didn't immediately put you like you said. You served for many many years. He didn't immediately <laughs> yeah. put you in the position that you're in. And I yeah. feel like a lot of times we're we expect to like immediately go into this mm -hmm. position when he has to prepare us first. He has to take those that time. You know mm -hmm. that six years you said six years. that's a lot of time to take, but it was necessary for you to be in the position you're and in. And I now. sat when I got here I sat from April to September. I sat in the middle section every week and I did not know but the whole time, God was restoring me. Mm -hmm. He was just preparing me, working yeah. on me, getting me ready, just watching things. And then, and then when I got on drums in September, all the way up to the end of 2021, mm -hmm. I, I mean, even in that, it was all preparation. So that's why the transition was as easy as it was. It was like, all right, you know, we want you. But I kind of freaked out when I spoke to Pastor and, and Pastor Matt. I was just kind of like, uh, I was like, what? Y'all want me to do what? And Because I was so comfortable playing the drums. Yeah. You see what yeah. I'm saying? And it was six years, and I was like, oh, man, I got so used to doing that. And now it's like, nope, we need you to transition yeah. into this area. Leading. Get leading, leading everyone. Leading, leading everyone. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's amazing. But it took me back to my childhood because I was five, leading everyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that, you know, it was going to work out this way, but. I'm grateful. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. So are we. Yeah. <laughs> I'm grateful. Thank you yeah. for your obedience. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So. But what a lesson that is. Getting outside your comfort zone. We could go for another 30 minutes. Yeah, getting outside your comfort zone. Listen. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. Listen. Doing what God listen. has called you to do. Listen. And a listen. lot of people serve behind closed doors. A lot of people serve within the church, like you said, on the drums. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have been serving maybe at another church. I know Correct. we're going to interview Nikki soon. And she's a PK, pastor's kid. Yeah. And she was served in her church in before Michigan. she came here. Yeah. And God gave her assignment here. Yeah. So, like you said, those years of servanthood, God never forgets those years. Mm -mm. And what a blessing it is to have you here and to have oh, you on yeah. the worship team Oh, yeah. Us. I love it. I love it. You know, sometimes I, you know, me and Pastor say, he, he, he talked to me, so, hey, man, how you feeling? I just, yeah, I'm having fun. So, it's <laughs> like, I don't have the words to adequately really tell how I really yeah. feel within but it's it's so much joy that it's like those I'm having fun I'm enjoying it and just seeing the team uh unite we 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 are united front Brad I tell you he 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 could test to that but we we have lots of fun together and we learn from each other you know although I'm the leader I still put myself in position to learn mm -hmm. you know and to be a great leader you got to make great leaders mm -hmm. so that's it I mean, was there like a sense of urgency? Like when you got it, like, hey, we need to act now. Was that the point? It was like, hey, there's no, once you got the word, it was like today. Well, what happened was when I got the word for us to come, um, 
We drove here on a Wednesday night. What? Yes. From Georgia? From Georgia. Good night. 13 Good night. hours. I drove here 13 hours. This was an act of faith because, um, as like I said before, I didn't know nothing about the church or anything like that, but I, I knew it was God. Wow. And so Trina and I, I had, I just we just finished paying bills and all that kind of stuff, and I had $30 cash on me. I had a full tank of gas and $30 cash, and I was like, we need to go. Wow. And so as an act of faith, I drove straight through, came to a Wednesday night, Bible study, and um, when I got here, uh, Tony Jordan, I'll never forget this, he came up to me and said, welcome home. Shook my hand and just said, welcome home. And so we sat there, and we was in the service, and to make a long story short, um, I was leaving to go back to Georgia, mm -hmm. but I used the $30. Yeah, you got one more ticket. So, I, <laughs> so I, I had no clue on how we was getting home. And I was leaving the church literally walking out the door. And I didn't know what was going to happen. And Pastor Justin, out of nowhere, he was all the way in the front of the church. I don't even know how he got to me that quick. Wow. All I felt was two hands on my shoulders. And turned, I turned around and he said, hey, I'm Pastor Justin. I said, oh, hi, Pastor, how you doing? I told him a little bit of the story. And he started to speak immediately in my life, prophetically, and was hitting everything wow. on a nail. Like, wow. I mean, he was... He was hitting it. And wow. so um, I told him, I said, okay, we, you know, we're going to come back again and visit. And he shook my hand, and I thought he put a piece of tissue or a card or something in my hand. So I, I hugged him, and I got to the car. And as soon as I got in the car, I opened my hand. It was $100. Wow. What? Wow. <laughs> you did your home handshake? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to shake his hand. I'm going to shake his hand again in right? to see what happens. I mean, but, <laughs> I mean, there's not some handshakes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but that's, and we got in the car, and we was able to get something to eat, fill what? up the tank, and go back to Georgia. And then, and that was in January wow. of 2016. Uh, April of 2016, they was asking us, are you going to uh, resign for your house and all that stuff? Mm -hmm. And we said no. Wow. And that's when I reached out to Pastor Justin. I said, I'm, we, we're on our way. We coming for good. Here we come. That's, we come that's past amazing. Them. We come. That's unbelievable. I didn't know that. That's so, and, and, and so, so, so people will know when God tells you to do something, he already uh, prepared the way for you, mm -hmm. yeah. even if you can't see it. Because sure. here it is. I, I didn't have a job lined up. Mm -hmm. wow. And I didn't even have a house. Yeah. So we didn't know what we was going to do, where we was going to live. We stayed in the hotel for 10 days. What? In the midst of that 10 days, I got a job. And in the midst of that 10 days, we uh, got the house. That is unreal. Yep. That's amazing. The people got it. So, yeah. That is so good. So that was 2016. Yeah. What a year. Wow. Yes. <laughs> what a first quarter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is the first three, four months. We will never forget it. That's amazing. We will never forget it. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Well, let's back it up a little bit. Yeah. So, prior to moving to Texas, what was your musical journey and career like? Wow. Um, I've been in music all my life, honestly. Um the journey part, I started directing choirs at five. Wow. Yep. Five and years I, old? Five years old. Oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> Yeah. I started Why directing the choir. I directed the choir at my home church from five to 18. And then the career started at 18 because I started a community choir. And it was for young people. Um, all the young people that, you know, grew up in our community, um, I just had a vision to do something for them uh, that was positive. There was yeah. a lot going on. Y'all yeah. know what it is. And uh, I just wanted to do something different. Yeah. And what I, we started singing, and the career jumped off because we started out with seven choir members, and in a span of a year, we grew to 100. Wow, that's amazing. So you had 100 young people traveling on a bus, um, going to different cities, going to different states. I was able to sign a record deal. We started putting out music, and all that happened that way from for about 13 years. What? 13 years, and then I left New York, and I moved to Canada, and I started another chapter of the choir I started in New York, and we did the same thing for five years. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so that was my musical journey. What was the name of, like, the choir? Abundant Life. Your, Abundant Life. Abundant okay. Life. Awesome. Abundant Life. That's yeah. amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Huh. Are any of your kids musically inclined? All or of any, them. Really? All of them. They're banging on all my furniture. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think I'm getting it back because I used to do that to my mom's furniture. I, I banged on the pots and pans with hangers and stuff. <laughs> Found any type of pencil and stuff like that. And um, they they are all musically inclined. Um, they always listening to music. Always, it's, it's it's amazing because they always have HFCC playing. You know, and how so I get up. I mean, and I'm talking six a.m. You know, they get up early and they already tapped in, playing music, listening to music. Zion, he's seven and he's just banging on stuff. <laughs> Zephaniah, he's just Zen, banging on stuff. And so they all, you know, they all are musically inclined. Uh, Journey and DJ, they love singing and stuff like that. So, yeah. how do they? How how do you? How do you balance, you have five kids, so you have your five kids at home, yeah. and now you are leading a choir yeah. and a worship team. How yeah. do you, how does that work for you to do all of that? Are they very, like, gracious with your time and, you know? Yeah, I, I, I understand, well, for me, I understand the hats that I wear, mm -hmm. and I know when it's time to be daddy. Yeah. And so when I get home from doing what I have to do here at the church, I make sure that that's all they see is daddy. Because mm -hmm. when I'm home, they don't say, hey, worship pastor. <laughs> you know, they don't say that. All they know is that's my dad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I make sure it, for, for them to make a sacrifice for me to be released from home, to be here, mm -hmm. to do, the, do what I need to do. Um, I, in return, do that when I get home for them. I, I lay down what I had to do, and I go and just be in daddy mode. So we outside throwing football. You know, I'm sitting there watching Peppa Pig and all these, yeah. other, <laughs> all these other cartoons and stuff that's coming up and what they're doing. I sit yeah. there with them, and I got my arms around them and just sitting there being dad. So they see a dad as the worship pastor, mm -hmm. but they also see, dad, that's my dad. We outside having fun, yeah, you know, throwing ball and laughing right. and doing music together, play games together, yeah. that type of stuff. I bet it's impacting them too, though, to it see is. you on the platform worshiping. Like you have some worshipers in your family. I see them up there worshiping. They, they cause yeah. that, and the reason why, and that's what they do at home. Mm -hmm. So what we do here at church is what we do at home. We yeah. we put music on and we we have a, a dance off. We do we do crazy you stuff. You have your own home. little choir yeah. at home. Too. Absolutely, yeah. all right. And, <laughs> so we be we be dancing. So they take turns one by one. They go dance and then I, I get in there and I dance and then we all just come to the center and just dance and just praise God. Yeah. And that's what I mean. We do that even for birthdays in, in, yeah. in my household. We play a birthday song and we do the same thing. So so the music is there. The worship is there. The praise is there and that's why it's easier for me when I'm leaving because they say oh daddy's going to work slash church so yeah. that's the way they look at it like oh dad you just going to church yeah. so when I get home in the afternoon they know where I was they, yeah. so they know where I am at all times mm -hmm. when I leave the house I'm here at the church when I leave the church I go back home oh, and I'll be daddy mm -hmm. that's yeah. that's so yeah. So I was telling them before you got here yeah. like, like when we first my wife and I first came to church um, we were sitting in you know if people don't come to Heritage of Faith, like, the choir came up on a Sunday morning, and mm -hmm. both my wife and I like, oh, what's up with, you know, we don't come from a choir church, let's put yes. it that way. Yes. Our experience didn't have a choir, and so we would come up, and then this choir would go, and it was amazing. It was awesome, but the focal point was I got to see the back of you. Okay. And I'm like, oh, that dude's getting it in. That guy <laughs> is a worshiper. Yes, sir. I didn't know what you looked like for months, all right? <laughs> all, all I knew about you was the back of you worshiping and, like, getting, like, like just leading the choir. <laughs> and it was a beautiful sound. It was amazing. It was awesome. We, we loved it. And I finally met you at Thrive. I'm like, that's what he looks like. Oh, cute. The front of him is amazing. He's I hope just, he wasn't disappointed. I was, I was, I've never been disappointed. But that's what I knew about you was just yeah. you leading worship. You lead the choir. Yeah. And I say that because we, we had a worship. Like, when we first came here, the worship was a huge part of why we came. We mm -hmm. thought it was amazing, right? Mm -hmm. We loved it. Um, but it had a style to it, mm -hmm. clearly. And mm -hmm. then you came on as, as a new worship leader. Mm -hmm. Completely different. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Like, we sure. love it. Like it's, But it's totally different. Mm -hmm. And so it was watching you go from, like, leading the choir. And again, not knowing you personally, but then all of a sudden, like, hey... You know, Pastor Danny's leading worship, and then having you come up there and you bring this energy mm -hmm. and this completely different style of worship, which is like it's like it's like what kid do you love more? It's like they're amazing. <laughs> like, yeah. So like now you have this 
unbelievable presence about you on the stage. Wow. Like the way that when you bring in the, the multitude of all the, the people, it's just a totally different energy. Mm. And if people aren't here, they're, they're missing out on a just unbelievable worship time. Wow. Like, mm. And it's like, what, like, what inspired that in terms of like, how do you want to lead worship? Like, I guess that's what I'm... Like, oh, man, I, you know what? First things first, I love God. Okay. You know, and then he could have chose anybody else mm -hmm. to be doing this. They chose me. So that right there off the back just makes me come with an energy like you could have been doing something else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you could have been somewhere else. You could have been out in the street struggling. You could have been, you know, I think about those different things um, in totality of the grace and the mercy of God on one's life. Mm -hmm. And so for, for me to come here without even expecting to be in this position, mm -hmm. that's that I, I, I didn't even have a clue about this position. So now that I'm in it, I go hard for God every single time I get an opportunity because I want I want to please God first. I want to make him happy. I want to put a smile on his face. Mm -hmm. I want him to say that's my child giving me everything he got. Yes. You know, um and I believe worship comes from a a, a place of relationship. Mm -hmm. When we have a, a a relationship with God, when you get the opportunity to to express it you know, you really don't see nobody else. Mm -hmm. It's you and him. And so that's where I get that from, where my presentation is not for man. My presentation is to just usher in his presence mm -hmm. for the whole body to become aware of who he is and what he is to all of us. So, I mean, so that is very obvious. Yeah. Once you articulate it, it's so weird because as you receive it, for all of us who are, get the joy of watching it. It mm -hmm. is such an amazing experience with our worship. It's like, so like, like walk me through your Sunday morning, like when you're getting prepared for it. And obviously it seems like it's a week long preparation, which is amazing. I always watch no it. But like, no like, like what goes through a Sunday morning with you when you're getting ready for worship? Uh, well, usually my Saturdays, uh, what I do. And even during the course of the week, when I get home sometime, once I put the kids to bed and everything like that, I get quiet. Uh, I get to myself, sometimes I go in the backyard and no phone, no music, no TV, no nothing. And I'm just sitting there and I, and honestly, I ask this question, God, what you want to hear? Mm -hmm. What do you want to hear? What, what, what can I do, um, to make you great in the house on that Sunday morning, mm -hmm. that worship experience? Somebody is coming that's in need of something. Amen. There's never a time when somebody doesn't come to church and they're not in need of something. And so I always want to make sure that what we give out is to show God meeting the need. Yeah. So awesome. usually I get to myself, I get quiet and, um, me too. Sometimes I put my headphones on and I put on worship music and I tap in, you know, just by myself for a couple of hours. And then I come here pumped. Pumped and ready. That's Pumped so and ready. I'm ready now. Man. I wish this was a video. You see it. This is great. I'm pumped, man. I'm pumped. I'm pumped. God is good, man. He's faithful to us. Yes, he is. Well, you lead a lot of people, too. I mean, you have ever, all the people on the worship team and yeah. the whole choir. How do you take that energy that you have and pass it on as a leader to your team? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I make them know that worshiping God is fun. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's, it's supposed to be an, an enjoyment. You're supposed to enjoy what you do. You know, nobody is going to go to a basketball game and not cheer. Yeah. Right? So if you come to the house of God, you getting dressed, after getting dressed and doing all that stuff, when you come there, there should be a certain energy that you bring because you're leaving your house, which is your comfort zone, and you're coming to a greater comfort zone, and you're just giving God praise and you're giving God honor. So when they, I think, I don't physically uh, or verbally tell them, hey, you need to do it this way. I think I lead by example. Yeah. And I think it's easier to catch on because they say, okay, he's going hard. Wait a minute. You know, yeah. I, I can't stand there because if you do, you look, you look like, you look like you don't belong there. You, pretty I, much. you do. We were talking about this earlier. Your attitude is like infectious. People see your, you mm -hmm. know, your energy wow. and they feed off of it. So <laughs> seeing wow. the choir and seeing people 
excited to worship mm-hmm. gets you excited to do it also. It, it, the, so I feed off them. Yeah. And so what happens is, even in our rehearsal, I let them know that it's okay mm-hmm. to do it. You know, because sometimes you get people, they come from different walks of yeah. life, and it's not a, a bad thing. That's just how people were raised. And some people feel, no, nah, I better not do that. That's 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 too much. No, no, no. You know, he's been good to you. You know, you you could you could acknowledge his goodness through your praise yeah. and through your worship. So you know, you want to throw your hands up, throw your hands up. You want to shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah. And so I do it. So I don't say, oh y'all, just do what I'm doing. No, yeah. I do it. And it looks different for everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's the beauty of it. Yeah. So our slogan at Heritage is winning in life. Woo. We all want to be winners in life. Mm-hmm. So how have you been a winner in life? You know, uh, honestly, by having a lot of peace. A lot of peace in my life. I, You know, we all go through things and battle situations and and and. Just to see how I overcame everything. Because people see what I do and they, man, that's nice. But they don't know the, 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 it costs something to yeah, be anointed. Right. It's, it's, a, mm-hmm. it's a costly thing. And, and when you are anointed, the enemy tries you so hard because he wants to defeat you in the area of doing what God called you to do. And so for me to overcome those obstacles, you know, those hurdles, jump over those hurdles and endure those things really, really um, makes me know, yo, you win it. You win it. You don't have to have all the money in the world. You don't have to have the biggest house. You don't have to drive the, the, the most fanciest car to prove that you're a winner. Winner can be, come from within your peace of mind and you having a heart uh, and, you, and you're being blessed and God is taking good care of you. And so that's what I'm winning. <laughs> I'm a happy man because, and it's because you know, I'm just I'm just grateful that I was obedient. Because sometimes you know, even we spoke about my history a little while ago, and one thing that the Lord showed me was, uh, it's good to remember the history, but don't operate in the history. Amen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Create a new lane. Because you're making more history. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So <clears throat> if I just came and just stayed stuck in that, mm-hmm. I wouldn't grow. So I'm winning in that area as well because I, I know how to lay aside what was and go after what is. Amen. So that's it. So good. Y'all have another question? Um, yeah. For people like me who are new mm-hmm. to the church, are new to the community, um, what is something you want them to know about you that they just wouldn't? You know, something about you personally that, like, hey, I, unless I had the chance like this, not everyone gets this, which is, thank you so <laughs> much. No this, this is amazing. But, like, what would what do you want them to know about you if they don't know anything else? I am a humble guy, man. I, and it, it doesn't take much to make me happy. I don't have to go to the greatest restaurant to, to, to put a smile on my face. I could be at Chick-fil-A and... Be greatest sp- yeah. <laughs> and be smiling from ear to ear. You know, um, one thing about me, I'm, I'm big. I love sports. I okay. love basketball, um, and uh, I just love having a good time in mm-hmm. life. You know, um, and I love seeing other people happy. I love making other people happy um, through 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 the gifts and talents that God gave me. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, Danny, what a joy it was to have you with us uh, today and get to talk to you. And just like you were talking about a little bit ago when you were like, there's more to my story. And yeah. there's trials and things that I went through. Yeah. Um, I think it would be great to have you back for another episode and talk about some sure. of those trials and how you got through those things to where you are now. I think that's so important for the body buck, of Christ. Buck, buckle your seatbelts. Yeah, buckle them up, guys. <laughs> we need to have Danny back. Right? So, yeah. Sure, I would love um, to come back. Well, we loved having you today. Thank we're you. so excited for future plans with you. And thank you, listeners, for joining us. We pray that you have a blessed week. Again, we want to thank you for joining us for our very first episode. The Winning Conversation team is truly honored that you spent some time with us today, and we hope that you were so refreshed by hearing Danny's story in a new light. We have so many more great conversations ready for you, so join us next week again on Friday, and we'll see you soon.